promoting an employee to manager is a very big deal. A great manager enables and increases team performance. A poor manager reduces team performance and increases team costs. Choosing to promote the right person is a very big deal for you, the team and the business. How you assess an employee has the right attitude, attributes and skills to be a successful manager is what we're covering today. Very importantly, delivering great results as a contributor or employee does not mean they will be a good manager. The skills that make a star employee are very different from the skills and attributes that make a star manager. When promoting an employee to manager, I suggest you consider, firstly, seven behavioral signs that they should be displaying. Secondly, why good self-awareness and self-learning skills are vital. And third, the organizational intelligence that they display. Being a good leader is as much about their personal attributes and approach as it is about their people and leadership skills. And you can teach skills. It is a lot harder and less likely a person will change their personality, their assumptions, beliefs, and everything that influences how they approach and deal with others. There are a big range of people skills needed to lead others effectively and build high performing teams. Having those skills are important, but not as important as how your employee chooses to use them. When considering promoting an employee to manager, you should look out for these seven behavioral signs in their day-to-day -day work. Firstly, they put in effort to proactively help others improve and be better. Secondly, the employee puts the team before themselves. Third, the individual has positive energy and raises others up, not puts them down. Fourth, they are interested in learning and improving themselves. Fifth, the individual is confident in themselves and they like themselves, i.e. they don't need others to make them feel valuable or better about themselves. Sixth, they are good at listening and respecting others' views and opinions alongside their own. And seventh, the employee demonstrates their interest in and desire to manage and get the best from others. Being a good manager is a demanding role and it takes up a lot of energy. Employees with high energy levels are going to cope better and be able to do more for their teams than those with low energy levels. Good energy levels are important to do a great job as a manager. Towards the end, I will share different ways to find out about and assess each of the seven traits and behavioral signs that we've just gone through. Secondly, when considering promoting an employee to manager, look for those with good self-awareness and self-learning skills. Employees want to follow leaders that help them, that make them better, more confident, more capable, etc. As a minimum, employees need to feel that they are better off with the leader they have compared to having no leader. It is very hard to lead others with any credibility if you are unable to lead and manage yourself. Self-awareness is a crucial skill to enable self-management. For example, when you know what your hot buttons are, you can manage your reaction when they are pushed. When you are conscious of your values, your assumptions, your preferences, your insecurities, your beliefs, etc., then you are much more able to choose how they influence your decisions, actions and behaviours and of course those around you. Having good self-awareness is very important to manage others well. Equally important is the ability to self-learn. If, for instance, does your employee look to learn from all the experiences they have, the good and the bad? You know, do they blame others for mistakes or do they look at what they could have done better, even if it's not their fault? Do they proactively make the time to read books, watch videos, take courses to improve their skills? Do they learn from their own mistakes and the mistakes of others, or do they rely on you to spoon feed them? When you promote an employee to manager, they're going to have to learn or improve a whole range of skills. They have to be good at self-learning to become effective and good as a manager over time. Next, we cover how organizational intelligence is needed to do a good job as a manager. My name is Jess Coles. If you're new here, Enhanced.Training shares people management expertise, resources and courses teaching you how to build high performing teams. I've included links to additional resources in the description below, which you will find useful, so do take a look at these. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe.
So thirdly, when considering promoting an employee to manager, work out how good their organisational intelligence is. The complexity of a manager's role keeps increasing in today's workplace. Your managers have a very important role to play in terms of firstly in making the decisions that have a bigger impact on the organisation. Secondly, prioritising which work they and their team does to maximise the value created. Third, coordinating work between teams and across functions. Fourth, being a team player within the management ranks, i.e. supporting and helping peers and more senior managers achieve company goals. To do this well, I think potential managers should be demonstrating the potential to, or actually doing, firstly being able to see and understand the bigger picture so they can best contribute to the wider goals. Secondly, be able to join the dots to create solutions and opportunities for their team and the wider business. And third, think systematically, you know, recognising how interconnected every part of the business is and solving problems with the bigger picture in mind, as well as looking at the detail. The bigger the company, the more important organisational intelligence becomes to do an effective job as a manager. Here are five tips on how to try to assess each of these areas before promoting an employee to manager. Do as much as you can to observe the employee you are thinking of promoting to manager and assess them based on their decisions, actions and behaviours. If find out how others experience working with this person, don't rely on what you have been told by the individual in meetings or through asking questions. Show me rather than tell me is a very important principle to follow. So five tips to assess individuals include, you know, firstly, spend time personally observing the individual interacting with their team members and colleagues. You know, how energetic, enthusiastic, curious and interested are they when working and interacting with others? Secondly, ask the individual for their opinions, viewpoints and interests in all the areas we've covered today. You know, put situational questions to them and ask what they would do. Ask yourself, do their decisions, actions and behaviours align with what they're telling you or are there significant differences? And third, get them to talk about what they do outside of work that contributes to building their management skills and teamwork. You know, sports captains, leader of interest groups, etc. are all great indicators of energy and leadership potential. Dig into the details so you are sure they do what they tell you. Fourth, a really important action is to ask multiple team members and colleagues for feedback and opinions about the person in question. You ask people from all levels, you know, above, their peers, and most importantly, below the individual being considered. Run anonymous 360 degree feedback questionnaires as well as chatting to these colleagues uh, in an interview basis. There is nothing wrong with asking the individual for recommendations of who to speak to as well. And finally, watch out for character traits like the individual not listening to others, poor teamwork, not helping others, those that think they are better than others, those that put others down or point out faults rather than praise their achievements, those that blame others, raise problems without potential solutions and similar. If there is a consistent pattern of any of these types of traits, I suggest not promoting an employee to manager in this situation. If in doubt, don't promote. Make sure you investigate carefully and fairly and are very happy with what you receive back before promoting an employee to manager. So in summary, selecting the employee to promote to manager or those that you are externally hiring into the management positions is probably one of the most important decisions that you can make to support yours, the teams and the business's success. Great managers are trained and taught. They learn the skills needed to be good at managing others. You are looking for potential, not the finished manager, which is why the traits covered today are so important. We've been through, firstly, seven behavioral signs that they should be displaying. Secondly, why good self-awareness and self-learning skills are vital for managers. Third, the organizational intelligence they display. Fourth, five tips to assess these important traits. If you have any questions on promoting an employee to manager, who to choose and why, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Don't forget to take a look at the additional resources in the description. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.